The Kindred 1 and 2. Ah, uh, yes. The return of Carson Beckett. I remember speaking yes. to, to Paul. Was that the end of season... What, so we, we, uh, Carson was killed off in uh, uh, season three? What Carson was killed off in season three yeah. and Sunday. Yeah, yeah. I remember being at the rap party and telling him, okay, this is how I want to bring your character back. And then we finally got the opportunity, and I was like, oh, it's going to blow the fans away. And then... You know, there's that infamous sci-fi promo, you know, next week on... Oh, my you know, gosh. One, and they're like, you won't believe the last five minutes. And then it shows Carson there and, he, you know, going, you know, what took you so long? And it's like, well, yeah, I'm sure they'll believe the five minutes now because you just showed it to them. I could, I could not believe that they spoiled that for the fans. I, I couldn't uh, uh, believe it either in hindsight because it's like... You know, this was one of those big buildups, and you get to the episode, and it's like, oh, sci-fi didn't just yeah. preview it. They completely blew it. Yes, you know? they completely blew it. And so all the Carson Beckett fans were tuning in or like, oh, okay, uh, Carson's coming back this episode. When is he coming back? When is he coming back? And so instead of being delightfully, delightfully surprised in those last closing moments and looking forward to the next episode, they were probably frustrated as they waited for Carson to show up. And then when he finally shows up, it's, rather than being like, oh, great. It's more like, <laughs> ah, finally. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. It's, you know, I, I equate it to, to Luke's appearance at the end of, of uh, Star Wars 7. Because, you know, we've been told that Mark Hamill's is, oh, you don't watch Star Wars. That's right. But I'll take your word for it. Well, it had, uh, uh, we know that Mark Hamill's in, in the, uh, what was it? What was that? The, the Force Awakens. But he's in the last scene. And it's like, I, I, I guess he's in the credits. Yeah, because he's technically there. But, I mean, it was one of those situations. And um, do you think that this was because the advertising team who was putting together the promos really wanted a win with this episode and like, oh, we want audiences to tune in, so let's go ahead yeah, and use this. Yeah, I'm sure okay, was, yeah, it wasn't I'm just sure stupidity. That It was a targeted approach. Well, it was intentional, yes. Right. Yeah. I, Although it's funny because I've, I've since gone on, on YouTube and the promo has been altered. You're so, kidding. No. Wow. Okay, then. So I, I cannot find that original <laughs> promo anymore. Well, for so so Trio had a Nielsen 1.1, Midway had a 1.3, The mm -hmm. Kindred had a 1.2, and The Kindred Part 2 had a 1.3. So, I mean, all things being equal, it didn't necessarily cause anything to explode, but at the same time, it was pretty consistent. Um, yeah. I mean, but it's the same way with, for instance, stunt casting, um, where um, a lot of the times the network will be like, you know, you got to get a stunt cast, you, get, you know, uh, this will be like a big episode because you're going to have so-and-so making a, a, an appearance. And so we would pay the extra money to get a guest star, and then it would have like really no effect on the ratings whatsoever. Got it. Wow. What a juggling act to create a TV mm. show. <laughs> Ugh. And working in Taylor's pregnancy with Michael, Connor Trenier is back. Mm. We haven't talked about Michael yeah. yet this season. Yeah, yeah. One of my favorite uh, Atlantis villain, a complex, complex character. And I mean, the, he, here's a, sort of another reason. I mean, I think, you know, um, uh, Rachel's pregnancy allowed us to create a storyline that obviously we wouldn't have pursued. Correct. Um, you know, if she hadn't been, if the actress hadn't been pregnant and yet kind of opened the door to this really interesting relationship uh, between Taylor and, and Michael. Yeah, a sick one, for sure. Yeah. And it's one of those where I think it was, a lot of it was just, just, you know, he, like, accusing the rest of Atlantis, particularly focuses his energy on her in forcing him to be what he was because you know they needed a weapon against the wraith and now she is bringing life to something that she's going to care about and now he's going to turn around and take it away from her it's pretty right. darn insidious yes yeah so by this episode he's perfected uh, uh his genome or however you want to call it so that he's no longer feeding 
on uh, other human beings. He is genuinely his own kind of unique thing, whatever that is. Mm-hmm. Um, it was, it was, I still wish that, that we had seen that character more. I think that we could have done more, more with him than having one or two appearances a season. Yeah. You know, but in hindsight, I guess that's, that's another one of those hindsight things. Yes. In hindsight, it's one of those hindsight things. <laughs> The Last Man. Oh, yeah. Another, I, another I, fan favorite. Yes, yes. Old Rodney. Yes. Shepard uh, takes a, a, a wrong turn at the Stargate during a solar flare and gets thrown, I think, 50,000, 48,000 years into the future, if mm-hmm. I'm not mistaken. It was a great what if. Yeah, I, I love those types of episodes. Well, I, in general, I love time travel, but I love those road not taken episodes where, you know, you jump ahead and you see how it all turned out. Mm-hmm. And we get that through uh, Rodney's backstory. Yeah. I was watching this episode thinking, and this was just my assumption going into it, that there were sleeper agents inside of Atlantis of, of Michael's race, and he would be running and gunning back to that Stargate. Like, they had just completely taken over the galaxy or the universe, and mm. they were all that was left. But instead, it's a quiet, dismal yeah. future. Yeah. In fact, actually, what you're pitching out was sort of what I had kind of wanted to do for our season six two-parter. Oh. Which we never got to do. But in any case, uh, a conversation for another time. Oh, uh, okay. But uh, yeah, yeah. I just remember this episode um, just filling the corridors with sand. So much sand. <laughs> yes. Uh, and then during that windstorm or that sandstorm, um, and I, I, I have some behind the scenes videos I can sort of, sort of dig up of, of Joe with the, with the, uh, you know, the, uh, the handkerchief over his face and fighting through the sandstorm. And that sand was made up of oatmeal. Oh. It was like a mix of oatmeal and, and, and something else, some other grain. Okay. Okay. Yeah. A nice handy substitute on short notice. Yes. Yes. You know, we're going to have to have some kind of show and tell at, at some point here in the future of some of that content of mm-hmm. yours. I'd love to I'd love to show it to some people because there's so much good can, behind the scenes stuff that you shot. If I can find it. Yes. Well, if you want to send it all to me, I'd be happy to catalog it for you. Well, I, I don't even know where it is. That's the thing. I so, understand. Uh, <laughs> I get it. <laughs> this was a great season. Um, yeah. Really solid series of episodes again proved uh that that the show really had come uh into its mm-hmm. own first season uh, for without sg1 being shot next door except for the the two uh feature films yep so yep. yeah it's um it's solid so paul just wrote me he said joe joe answered uh the question about his impeccable style during covid yeah. Yeah, my so, impeccable style dur- during COVID, I, I, bas- I basically answered him. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I basically told him that I, I'm able to maintain my impe- impeccable style because I keep a framed photo of the actor who played Carson Beckett, always within <laughs> my line. My line. So basically, I, I, you know, and, and I know sort of, you know, this is what I aspire to. Paul is so suave. He is suave. <laughs> he is. As, as, as uh, Akemi says, Hansamu in Japanese. Thanks for watching this clip from Dial the Gate. You can find the full live stream shows on our YouTube channel or visit dialthegate.com for the complete schedule. See you on the other side.